Okay, peeps. Yes, we are back with another video, and today I'm going to show you um, the process of uh, the HXC software. I figured it, may, it, it makes a lot of sense here yeah, for me to just uh, like through all the series that I've been doing previously. Uh, it wouldn't be complete without me doing the HXC emulator software. So, without further ado, let's let's get into it. So, on the screen here, we've got the HXC emulator software. Um, I haven't actually explored the entire, um, you know, uh, all the all the functions on this software. But I'm going to show you how I get my um, my discs from Akai format, which I have here, to HXC format. Now, you've got to make sure that your disk actually loads properly in your Akai, obviously, before you go and create an image, yeah? Otherwise, you know, you could have a defective disk. Now, at the same time, we're going to use Omniflop, and Omniflop can actually skip errors. So you can also use it for data recovery. But if you want to make images of your Akais, uh, you know, stuff that's going to be around forever or for as long as, you know, longer than the disks will last. You want to make sure you've got a good image so that it's future proof. So, first of all, I've got a disk here, which is some Akai Breaks, uh, break Snatch, I called it. Some nice breaks on here, um, which I've got in the sampler at the moment. I'm not going to play them, obviously, because this is just about the mechanics of uh, getting this to work properly. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up Omniflop. That's the first stage. Now, um, inside this uh, HXC emulator software, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute, I'm going to pop this into the disk drive and I'm going to rip it to the my hard drive. So let me do that first of all. And hopefully the disk is in good shape. It's probably a good idea as well to write protect your di disks, folks. Make sure this little tab is up before you start messing with all this stuff because you can, you know, accidentally write over your disk. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to bring this up quite high uh, so you can see what's going on. I'm going to hit the, the next button and then just go to read disk, click next. And look, I've got these these ticked. Uh, skip bad sectors, write bad sectors uh, as 0FF and auto detect format. So it's going to auto detect the format of the disk, which is going to be Akai, providing the disk is decent, and it's going to skip any bad sectors that it finds. That way it won't actually take anything that's not readable. And it will sometimes you get bad sectors and they don't even have any data on it. So that's handy, yeah. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to click next. Now the drive is then going to scan the disk. And obviously I don't know the full scientific stuff what of what goes on on it. But as you can see, that's gone missing. It's it's scanning the disk, right? So it will scan for a bit, and the light will come in on your disk drive, and you just have to wait for it to detect what type of disk it is. Once it figures it out, then you're good to go. So that's the first stage of ripping the software. So it says not responding, but don't worry. It's actually working. I can see the disk light on. We just have to hold tight. I can hear my disk drive. My disk drive is buzzing away, and it's uh, trying to um, trying to figure out what disk it is. And that should come back at some point. Just leave it, let it let it roll for a bit. And in the meantime, we'll talk about a little bit about the HXC emulator software. So as you can see, okay, it's found it. So this disk here is seen it first of all as it's suggested that it's an, it's an Acom BBC Master, but we know it's an Akai disk, yeah. So hopefully this disk is decent. It does actually load in the 950 quite well. So it loaded first time. Perhaps I've got a good disk drive on my 950. So I'm just going to go like that, right? And then I'm just going to quickly, come on, memory card. I'm going to literally just look at the disk name again. So it's called Akai Break Snatch, yeah? Akai Break Snatch 1. So I'm going to pop that in there again in the disk drive. And I'm just going to call it, and obviously put it into a folder. Now, there's a couple of formats that I found works with Akai um, when you're doing this sort of thing, right? Uh, let me just quickly name that so it's going to call, be called Akai Snatch Disk. And I'm going to put 950 as well. 950. Let me pop that there. So we've got the Akai 1950, Break Snatch 950. So we do that, save that, so it's going to be called 
Akai Break Statch. I know Akai discs do actually work with um, the Akai format if you want to write back to disc. Now, this Akai format has worked for me numerous times. Um, so uh, if you wanted to, you can write to Akai format. And, I've, and I have also um, successfully converted these images. Now, as far as I know, all of these images um, are not all of them, but the ones I've used are actually raw format images, which means that I think that Omniflop doesn't actually, it just, it goes, it copies it sector by sector. It doesn't actually read the data. So um, I've, I've had results with Akai format, which works when I'm writing back to disk. I've not tried to write .img back to disk, but for the purpose of this experiment, let's just use the .img format. So Akai break snatch. I'm going to click save. I'm going to click finish. And then what's going to happen next is this is going to scan your drive is going to take the format onto the hard drive and then it's going to create an uh, image file which is an image of that floppy disk now in theory we're supposed to be able to write that back to disk say like if you needed a copy in the future and you wanted to just call that up again and just uh, I'll say burn but write it back to floppy you could then do that so depending on the condition of the disk it may take some time um, currently uh, this is actually taking you know, it's quite short. You can see the estimated time there. It reckons it's going to be uh, two and a half minutes. Yeah. So I'm going to let that run through. And then um, after that's run through, I am going to uh, catch you on the other side. Okay, guys. So once that's finished, you can see here that it says uh, disk is finished reading. Right. So you just click. It says, do you want to repeat the operation? You go, no. So from there, you could carry on. You could save all your images up. At this stage, I'm literally just going to, uh, you know, carry on with this now. So next thing you do is you go load raw image. And then here where it says predefined, what does it say? Predefined this layout. You want to make sure that here is either, I guess it will work for 950 if you want it as 950 format or here. But I just put it on Akai S3000. It seems to work just fine. Um, I'll go load raw format. And then I would go to where I stored the disk, go to there, date modified, Akai snatch disk, you'll see the disk image is there, you load it up. Now, at this stage here, it will actually tell you uh, what it's found. It will tell you if there's an error with the image here, which I found, and it, you say it says two-sided raw image, eight tracks, two-sided, so it's just going repeating itself, right? So now, all you do from here is then you go to export. Now. At this stage, you put in your HXC emulator, uh, you know, all things considered, it's more likely going to be already configured, I guess, if you've got this far. Um, and, uh, if, you know, if you want to see a video on the configuration use of this, uh, there are some videos, but I guess uh, I sort of struggled with the S3000. So I can show you maybe a video on, on how to do that. So if I click here, I then go to my removable storage which is my HXC USB and as you can see I've got 47 current disk images uh, silly thing I did is they're not all uh, disks uh, but I'd say at least 30 to 40 10 disks or so are now I've got mine in numbered mode there's two modes numbered there's index mode and there's um, just the free free freelance mode or whatever you call it the freelance mode is so you can just have the actual disk names there and that's if you've got the OLE display um, but I don't have that on mine and this is the only one so far I've been able to get to work with my sampler. So I'm going to just click on that one and I'm going to change that to 48 because I want disk number 48 to work. And then hit save and then you see it just done a little read there. And that's pretty much it. Now one thing I would do guys is just make sure yeah, when you're ejecting your disk you don't pull it out. Now I don't know maybe it's my, my computer, maybe something to do with that, I don't know yeah. But what I found with this is um, I, my actual HXC um, USB storage got actually got corrupted from me doing not not doing this. So now I just eject it and it says safe to remove hardware. I pull that out, pop it in the disk drive, pop it in my HXC, and as you can see here, I'm just going to pop it in, and then it will look, it will flash. I'm going to change this to me, change this to 48 
wait oh actually wait a minute i haven't actually booted up my uh hxc and this is where you check your image so i've got i've got like uh i have to put my hxc on zero 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 where i've just got a, an akai floppy in now it's not an, it's not an operating system disk or anything like that and then i switch mine on otherwise i get that hard drive um skip error which everyone says is a scuzzy uh, fuse blow but i don't know i don't know about that to be fair my one seems to be working apart from when i do that so i'm going to just run this through to number 48 i believe we did so i'm going to go all the way up to 48 and uh, then it will flash and i should be able to go to load and there you have it the disk is there i could load the entire volume clear memory and load and that's it that's how i transfer files to hxc and i'm actually on my website at the moment i'm currently taking my library and i'm putting them up on samplers.co.uk to download uh if you're interested uh what what will happen is you'll get uh either a floppy disk image which you can then burn back to disk or you can uh, just use, if you've got an HXC emulator, you'll be able to download the files. I'll be putting the files up there for you guys to uh, easily just download. So the plan is behind that is you'll get like an Akai song disc um, and it will literally be, it will literally look something like this one where I've got an HXC images, two HXC images on this particular pack, which I'm just about to release. And also you've got two Omniflop discs in case you want to just write them back to floppy and do it the traditional way if you don't have an HXC emulator. I also put all of the WAVs in there and uh, I chop up the WAVs as well in recycle for you guys to use. Uh, you can. There's also a couple of Mesa files in there as well. Um, I also can do another video on Mesa if you guys want to see that, Mesa, Mesa, whatever it's called. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it very useful. Um, that's it for now. Take care. God bless. Peace. I'm a everyday